Hey, welcome back to Super Data World. Today we're going to be covering box plots in Python. So I'm going to show you what a box plot is and then how to make a box plot in a Python notebook with both Seaborn, which is more visually appealing, and matplotlib. So we'll start off with our imports, just importing pandas, matplotlib, Seaborn, and then just doing the matplotlib in line so we can see our graphs within the notebook itself. So just running that import there. Now I want to show you first what a box plot is. Now we all know what mean is. Mean is the average of a number of data points, but what median is and what the percentiles are, are kind of, if you take, if you take all the data points, put them into order, what is the center of the, what is the center point in the data set? Um, and it's, an, it's, it's a measure of central tendency, but it's a different measure of central tendency that what we would normally look at, which is the mean, which is the average, because the average can be skewed either side, say there's a huge number at minus, or there's a huge number at the top. It can skew the mean off in all different directions. So this is really to see what is the center of our data set. And then with a box plot, we can also see what are outliers, what's the 25th percentile of the data set, what's the 75th percentile of the data set. So I'll just run this one quickly. We're running a very simple example here, which is a data frame with one column called S. And you can see here that there's five points on either side of 50. So 50 is our median. And then the way this works out as well is that our 25th percentile will be between 20 and 30 and when that's the case you take the two of them and you uh, half them and that will be 25 and then our 75th percentile is between 70 and 80 and that will be 75. So I'll just run my box plot here and to run a box plot I've just taken s which is my data frame x dot box plot and then I put a plt dot title on it and here's my box plot here. So what you can see here from the box plot is this contains a a 25th percentile, which is sometimes called the first quartile, the second quartile, which is my median, which is the 50% percentile, and this is my third quartile, which is my 75th percentile. And I've gone through those up above. And what this will show is it'll, it'll show a box that has everything between the 25th and 75th percentile here. And then you have the whiskers, which will extend out 1.5% the interquartile range. And if there is outliers in the data set, it will extend out to the last point that wasn't an outlier um, that if it's outside that interquartile range. And what an interquartile range is, is that we take the 75th percentile number, which in this case is 75, we take that away from the, uh, the 25th percentile, which is 25 in this case, so that's 50. We multiply that by 1.5. So in this case, it's 75 plus 75, which would be 150. And that is inside, that will be inside our whisker. But as soon as we go outside of that range on either side, then the point becomes an outlier. So what a box plot can be used to do is to see all your points where the 25th percentile, 50th percentile and 75th percentile lies. And then also see if there's outliers in the data set, which which fall outside that 1.5 times the interquartile range. So what I'll do here quickly is I will just change this last point to 150. And this is the last point that lies within our uh, interquartile range away from the 75th percentile here. And I'll run the box plot again. And this isn't an outlier because it's 1.5% the interquartile range here. But once I change this to 150, this now becomes an outlier. So run this, run this, and then we have an outlier here. So what this will do now with the box plot is it'll take my last point that's not an outlier, which is 90 here, and then it'll show this 150 one as an outlier here. So I'm just gonna do a final box plots here. This one is just with four outliers. So I have minus 200, minus 100, 200, 300, or obviously outliers in the data set. So I'll just show you what happens when we have more than one. And this draws my box plot here, and then it shows my four outliers here. And then if I want to change in, this is this is a matplotlib. So if I want to change the matplotlib box plot to a horizontal box plot instead of my vertical box plot, all I have to do is in the function, just 
set vert equals false. And this is a horizontal box plot here. So I'd really use Seaborn to show box plots because it's much more visually appealing and much more options and styling and all that sort of stuff. So with Seaborn, I can set a theme um, and I can set a palette within the box plots and I'll go through the palettes in a little bit. But I'm going to set the team, uh, the Seaborn team to white grid. So I go SNS dot set theme style equals white grid, which just sets a, a theme for my box plot. Uh, I'm putting in my title again, it's plt.title. And then I'm creating my box plot with ax equals sns.boxplot. And I'm setting the y axis to be my s. So up here, I have, it's called s, my data frame's called s, but also my column's called s. So I'm selecting that column in here with just s brackets s. So you can see now this is a much more appealing box plot made in Seaborn, same idea, but just it looks a lot better. Um, and this is on the Y axis. So it is a vertical box plot. If I want to do a horizontal box plot, I can set um, it to the X axis. And here is what a horizontal box plot looks like. So that's just to show you what a box plot is. Now I'm going to show you a real data set and um, a box plot in action on something that has actual dimensions, a lot of data and how it looks. So I have a, a data set here. It's called a student performance data set. There's a couple of dimensions and then each student score in reading, writing and math. So I'll just show you what the columns are here. So these are my uh, these are my measures. These are my math score, reading score, writing score. And then I have my um, I have my dimensions here, which is gender, race, ethnicity, parents level of education, lunch plan and then whether they took the test preparation courses or not. I'll just to give you a look at the head of the data, and um, you can see that you know we have our measures here and the rest are all um, categorical columns. So just to describe this, we can actually see, we can kind of get a preview of kind of what our box plot's gonna look like, whether we're gonna have outliers or not. So the, the df.describe functionality or the data, the, whatever your data frame's called, .describe functionality, actually gives you the 25th percentile, the 75th percentile, and the 50th percentile of your measures. And from this, you can quickly see whether there's outliers or not. So we can see from the math score that our 25th percentile is 57, our 75th percentile is 77. That would mean our interquartile range is 30 because we're taking 77 from 57, multiplied by 1.5, and we can see that there is a zero in the data set. So we know there's an outlier there. Um, and then this... 100 wouldn't be an outlier because it would be within 1.5 times the interquartile range. Um, so this is a more intermediate box plot because we're adding a, a box plot on each axis. So we're adding a dimensionality to our box plot here. I'm First of all, I'm setting the palette as paired. I'm then doing my AX equals SNS.boxplot and I'm setting gender uh, on the x-axis and math score on the y-axis. And what that will do is that will give me two box plots um, for this graph. So it'll give me a male box plot and a female box plot. If I had many different dimensions in another, if I had many different, uh, sorry, categories in a dimension, say I had five or six, it'll give me five or six box plots. So say if I had white, green, red, blue, yellow, orange, say there'd be a box plot for each color if I set it to the x-axis. I'm also, I also have to, I've named my columns here for the x and y-axis, but I also have to uh, mention that the data equals the data frame. And then I'm putting a plt.title on it, and this looks like this. So I can see a lot of data about the math score in just one graph. So this is a thousand data points spread between male and female on math score. I can see that the female score is lower, on all uh, the all the, the dimensions except the top score. So the top score is the same on both. Um, and then I have a lower 75th percentile, 50, 50th percentile and 25th percentile on a female. And then on the female score, there's a, there is a lot of outliers as well down below. And the male score, the lowest score is about 30%, but the female score, the lowest score goes to 0%. So listen, a lot of things I can see from this one data set, and then I can go in and, and have a look through the data and just to see, I'll pull out these outliers and say, okay, what was the female score under 
under 25% have a look at whether they are real data points or there's some sort of uh, errors in the data. So the next thing I can do is I can set another dimension to this uh, box plot. And this time we're gonna set something called a hue and we're gonna, gonna have the hue equals lunch. And that's if they've bought the lunch plan or not. So not only can we see mat score by male and female, but we can also see mat score by male and female and also whether they purchased the lunch plan or not. And from that, we, can, we pull out four box plots. So I'm setting my palette to pastel this time and everything else is the same other than my hue here. So the hue equals lunch. So run this. And now I can see that, now I can see that people who had the standard lunch generally did better in the exam, maths exam, whether they be male or female. And the male and female scores are a lot closer on the people who had the standard lunch plan. And you can see that a lot of the outliers for female, a lot of the lower outliers are on people who who were on the free or reduced lunch plan. So just something, something to look at, something to look at there. This brings more, um, this brings more um, clarity to the data points, and we're able to dig into these uh, more and 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 pull out more meaning from them. So the next thing I can do, and, and I've gone through this in another video, the idea of subplots. So a subplot is that you have more than one plot, um, you have more than one plot in a single. Uh, a single plot essentially right so you've got one row and three columns of plots so that's three plots in there and um, so you can do plt.subplots n rows n columns you set the fig size and then you can set the figs right so you can set fig one two and three i'm doing a gender math score again so i've taken out the hue out of this just for the first example and i'm setting those to access zero access one and access two i have a look at this now and we've got um, maths, we can now have a look at math score, reading score and writing score across male and female. So we can see even though that the males did better at maths, they did much worse than the females in both reading and writing. But we can see also that the female scores have a lot of outliers across the three different uh, scores. So this plot tells us a lot more than the plot up above because we can actually look at, we can compare scores now across three different measures um, and we can see the outliers across three different measures in order to go in and have a look more at the data. So I would imagine that these three zero outliers might be a mistake in the data and we can go in and investigate that. Um, we can go and really investigate that further. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the hue back in for this graph here. So again, it's a subplot with one row and three columns. I'm setting a style uh, to dark grid so a little bit different and setting the palette to bone underscore or and just have a look at the palettes and the styles for for seaborn and you'll get used to them and then you can know which style you want for each plot but it's very it's very handy to actually just go set style instead of going into each box plot i want this to be that i want this box plot to be this color it kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of it so this time as i said we're doing test preparation scores as another uh, as another element of dimensionality in these box plots. And now you can see that altogether I have um, 12 box plots in here. So I've got, I can see now for my math reading and writing score, how the males and females did, and also how they did when they took the prep tests. So you can, all, you can actually see that a lot of the outliers are sitting on people who didn't take the, pre the prep tests on the female level and even on the male level as well on a uh, writing score, the outliers are sitting there. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to move these legends uh, for the subplots into a better place because these are obscure in the data. So what you can do here is you can see this is access zero, one and two. So this is access zero, one and two. And you can set access one, which is this one, because this is actually fine where this legend is. You can set access one dot legend and location to the upper left here, and then access two dot legend and location to the lower right here, and then show the graph. And same graph, nothing new, except that we're not obscuring the data points here. And you can move these around, so you can move them to center, uh, left, right, and center, uh, 
and you can set them to upper, middle, and lower. So lots of flexibility there in moving the legends around. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I've actually got all the code out here on GitHub. So you can, the GitHub link is down below. You go to the GitHub, open in Colab, and try and do box plots on the different levels of dimensionality. So we looked at test preparation course for the last one. If I have a look at lunch, parents level of education, race, you can have a look on the, we can mess around with having the X axis one dimension, having the hue another dimension, what makes the most sense. But I think we can all agree that we get a lot of information on this entire data set of a thousand data points from this graph here. Uh, and you can start to kind of pull out meaning out of the data very easily with box plots. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions or any recommendations for a future video, please leave them down below. And I'll see you very soon with another Python tutorial.